And an example of this is that um, with the dreams, um, my tests, when I, when I had cancer and was on chemo, I used to look at my dreams and the dreams used to predict what the tests would be a couple of months before. And that was really mind-blowing. And I knew that deep inside me, the dream world was telling me the truth well before the external world could even prove it. So I had the power, something was happening in me that would manifest later outside, which was incredibly empowering. So if I listen deep to my own knowing, I know well before doctors and any test outside can tell me what the truth is. So it's been an incredible journey into trusting my own deep intuitive knowing, which I believe is the voice of God in me, which is the snake actually. The snake, which in pre-Christian times was the goddess, and which in the Catholic Church was Satan. You know, patriarchy made the feminine into sat satanic stuff. Burnt witches, I mean I had so many past lives as a witch being burnt. I remember them so clearly. Um, so reclaiming the snake power in me, and this is what that painting over there about the Medusa is about. The Medusa was made into a horrible woman with all these snakes coming out of her. But actually what comes up in my painting of the Medusa is the golden snake. See right up the spine there? And here she is over here. And that's my voice. It's, in fact, it's the kundalini energy. It's the deep knowing. I, I can sit and listen now and I trust implicitly my own knowing. And that's the voice of God in me. And I don't go back to doctors anymore for tests because I know. I know what's going on in me. So it's, that's been a wonderful, wonderful liberating journey is to get to trust my own deep instinctual and beyond the instincts, the spiritual knowing. I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> It was about artworks being significant to you. It sounds like the goddess artworks were very black oh. as well as the oh, other. the black art, yeah. The black art. The agony and the ecstasy. The, the yeah. ecstasy, the yeah. ecstatic goddess. Yeah. So does that cover the range? Well, yeah, the art was, um, you know, the big six-foot paintings. I actually re I did my, re I rewrote the Bible according to woman for me. The first paintings I did were Genesis, you know, the, the seven days of creation according to the goddess. And they were very different to the male god. They are all about love and change and cycles and joy and weeping. Yeah, the feminine, cyclical. And then I did the resurrection, which is, an, I'll show you, beautiful painting of the resurrection. The goddess being resurrected. And then, you know, very Christian stuff. And then the ascension of the goddess into heaven. So she's the queen. I'm a queen. You know, we all are. The men are all kings too. No? Yeah, Reowning the, the queen in me. And... Um, the other one was um, the black goddess birthing me, which was very, very important to me, being born spiritually. I die to be reborn. That's one of my favourite pieces, actually. And that took me, each of those took me about nine months, interestingly enough, to birth and the big black canvases. And then there's that one of the Medusa, which is about my finally coming to terms with dying physically and being reborn. Yeah. So the art, would, yeah, the goddesses. It's interesting. When I first started painting, my body was quite masculine. I used to have big shoulders and powerful. And, and, and I actually got a mirror. In fact, that's the mirror. I stood in front of that mirror and painted myself in the nude, which is why they're in the nude. So I actually could really understand my body and my psyche and um, get the feedback. And they're actually very feminine, powerful, but a different type of power. Not about external power over, about owning my inner power the power to heal and love, actually, it's about the power to love, feminine power, which is really what I've claimed back, is about love. It's all about love, actually. And, um, and re-owning my body and actually loving it, and loving its power to make love and be loving. I mean, sexuality's changed a lot with me, too. It's beautiful. It's very different. It's really up here, heart chakra stuff, as well as genital, and, and up goes right up now, you know, tantric type of sex. So... It's been a wonderful journey into love, I guess, if I had to sum up the whole thing. And the art depicts that, I hope. The, we're going into the shadow, going into the agony, and reclaiming in the blackness. It had to go into the darkness to bring out the light. And that's why the paintings are often on the dark. When I'm in agony, I usually paint on a black canvas, and what comes out out of it is the gold. Is the out into the dark, into the shadow, as Jung would say. You find the light and bring that out to consciousness. And with that is incredible um, oh, joy. When you change the black into the light, there's this incredible 
richness. Richness is the word, yeah. Regal richness. Mm. And that's where art helped me a lot. Because the journey's all done in, in pictures and I can see it. Mm. Sounds like the journey impacted on, you, on your life. Oh, yes. Uh, what would you say were the most significant challenges you faced during the course of your illness? Well, the, the biggest one by far was facing the fact I was going to die. I mean, that was really very difficult. Um, I was very attached to this body. And whenever the cancer cells would go up, I'd go into a, quite a severe depression for quite a while. And um, the cancer came and went for a while, and that was awful. Because when it used to come back, I used to go into despair. And actually into the, the deepest despair would come the greatest pieces of gold. Not that I knew that at the time, but I do now. <clears throat> so facing the fact that I was going to die and letting go of my attachment to this life and this body and saying the h hardest thing was letting go of my husband too. I love my husband very deeply. Um, so, you know, wh having to leave him was very, and my children, was very, very painful because I prepared to die. I wrote my will out, did videos, and I prepared for the funeral. I mean, at the beginning I thought I was going to die and that was very difficult. And yet, in doing that, I think the greatest... My family's just grown so much. We all have. There's so much love between us. John and I... John, my husband, is incredible. He has just blossomed. Through, he stayed with me and we worked through the agony together. And, um, and I really wanted him, if I died, to find another woman too, because he's such a beautiful man. I think he got so much love to give. I was able to say, move on, you know, and... Fred, stop, just let go. So letting go has been very difficult. Letting go of life, letting go of children, letting go of my husband and family if I have to. Mm, that was very hard. But in having done that, it's been, I've been very liberated. I used to have to go off into the bush by myself a lot and paint and just meditate and be alone a lot. And it's actually brought out the best, I think, in my husband and myself and kids. My children have moved a lot and changed a lot too through this incredible journey. It's been difficult, but uh, very rewarding. I think we've got our values right at last. Yeah, a very deep connection to life and what's beyond. What is most important to you in your life now? And how is that aspect affected by your illness? Okay, the most important thing in my life to me is to love and love unconditionally. In fact, the whole journey has been, this whole incarnation, I suppose they all are, is about learning to really love, let go, okay? Face the parts of myself that I hated. I mean, I had a lot of self-hatred. I mean, I'd interjected so much abuse and stuff in my upbringing. I really, I remember thinking I just didn't deserve to be alive, actually, when I started therapy years ago. I felt the abuse and the neglect in my childhood was really deeply in me and I was acting the same towards me as my childhood people had. So learning to love myself has been the journey and, and, uh, and I mean that's the meaning of my life is to love. Is to love very, very deeply every every part of me. The darkness, you know. And, um, and I, when I get confronted now with something in me that needs loving more, instead of getting depressed or angry at people, I thank them and go away and work on it. I go to the monastery a fair bit too and meditate. Um, yeah, I still get confronted by parts of myself that need loving. And I mean, that's what I turn around and really want to love that part. And, and then other people too. So loving is what it's all about. Opening my heart to every bit of life. Every, every bit. And to every person too. Seeing the best in them. And um, not fighting back at people. I mean, not, not letting them abuse me, but... Trying to understand other people's pain rather than seeing them as obnoxious. If somebody's obnoxious, I try to see into their pain and love them. I mean, I put a boundary up to them and let them hurt me, but trying to see through often the negative emotions into the hurt person in myself and other people. And learning to love. In fact, that's the only thing that matters. When I, on my deathbed, I really want to know if I've loved enough, actually. Did I love my husband enough? Did I love me enough? It start off with me. Did I love life enough? Did I give it everything I've got? So that's what it's all about. 